Hello, my name is Steve Strublick, and today I'm going to show you how MagSec protects Ethernet messages within a 10-base T1S network. Media Access Control is the lowest layer of the network stack, and MagSec stands for Media Access Control Security. MagSec protects messages by encrypting and authenticating them using keys that are placed in each device. The TA100 in this case acts as the trust anchor, which stores the encryption keys and also performs encryption and authentication operations. The MagSec protocol is integrated into the firmware stack uh, that runs each device's network connection. Well, we've got a whole bunch of parts here. First off, we've got a touch display using a microchip SAM-A5 SOM board. We've got a DSPIC33CK that powers the HVAC fan and temperature controls. Up here, we have a SAMD21 board that's running the servos. And we have another SAMD21 board that actually lets me control a knob. Over in the corner, we have a SAMD54 that acts as the attacker. So the attacker's job is to attempt to break into the network and send its own messages. However, he doesn't have any keys, so any messages he generates would be invalid, and the nodes can detect that when they're protected with MagSec. All of this happens over the 10-base T1S network, which is these two little wires, which can take the place of a whole lot of stuff inside an automotive network. And in the center, we have an intrepid RAD Comet 2, and that acts as a network analyzer and capture device, which is actually sending Ethernet frames up to a Wireshark instance that will show you how all of this is working. Okay. On the demo itself, we have four pages. The first one is the HVAC page, and I can change the temperature and the fan speed. The second page is a servo page, and I can move the servos around by dragging my finger. I can also move the knob, and you can see that one of the servos is moving. The third page is a statistics page, which shows all of the network activity that each of the nodes is generating. The really interesting uh, columns here are the MACSEC in and out, the late and invalid numbers, but we'll get back to those later. And the last page is the configuration page, which allows me to enable and disable MACSEC. It allows me to configure the attacks, and that's actually how I'm going to show you how MACSEC protects messages within the network. So there are two types of attacks that I want to show you. The first one is called a spoofing attack. And what that means is that the attacker node is just generating its own messages. They're real messages that the other nodes would see, except that they're protected by MACSEC. And since the attacker doesn't have the keys, any messages it generates aren't going to be real. And the other nodes can detect that and reject them. But when I turn MACSEC off, you'll see what happens. So I'll go ahead and start the attack. But nothing's happening, except up on the, man, on the monitor here, you can see that the other nodes are reporting that they don't like the messages that the attacker is sending because they're not real. I can go over to the servo page. I can still drag my finger around. I can go to the HVAC page. I can still change the temperature. But when I turn MACSEC off, the system goes a little crazy. So what's happening is that the nodes are no longer protected. They're seeing the attacker's valid messages, and they're doing what the attacker tells them to. On this page, you'll see that the messages that the attacker sent were all logged as invalid, which means that the nodes correctly detected that they were not something they should process. But if I turn MACSEC back on, everything instantly goes back to normal. And as you can see, the messages are being rejected. The second type of attack I want to show you is called a replay attack. So every message in a MACSEC protected network has a unique number, and that number is always incrementing. The attacker can capture messages and try to play them back. And because they're valid MACSEC messages, because it just captured what was on the wire, they're perfectly OK. But the concept of replay protection allows the nodes to track those numbers as they increment and use a sliding window along the way. And as the attacker's messages that are captured become too old, as those numbers are too small, the nodes will start rejecting those messages because they're too old. So in this, I have it configured to capture eight messages, 
with a 16 message window size. And what that means is that after 16 new messages are generated, the messages the attacker is sending will no longer be valid. So I'll go ahead and go to the servo page to make it a little easier. So the attack is running and I'll go ahead and touch the page. And as you can see, the attackers replaying those messages, they're perfectly valid and the servos are doing what the attacker says. However, if I go over to the HVAC page and I make some new messages like changing the temperature or the fan, that window is advancing. And at some point, when I make enough new messages, you'll see that there's a pause because some of those messages are no longer valid. And as I make more, you'll see that all of the messages eventually become invalid. Now, if I go to the statistics page, you'll see that the attacker is still sending messages, but all of those messages are being marked as late, which means that they're outside of that window that all the nodes are tracking. And when I stop the attack, the late messages stop too. So I'm Steve Strublick. Thanks for watching.